Devlin. Yeah, the next rule. The platform. Andy Raymond Unfiltered ARU. He joins us it's every Wednesday round about this time. Welcome back. Hello, legend. How are you? Are you a vapor? Please tell me you're not a vapor. If you're a vapor, I'm cutting you off right now, mate. I look at you and I put you on a pedestal. I put you as the kind of guy that I look at and think, the the guy world should be like you. Tell me you don't vape. No, I, I don't vape, mate. I'm old school, straight onto the darts. Go on, mate. Absolutely. I saw I saw a chick the other oh, saw a chick. I saw a girl the other day smoking a gasper outside of I just thought, yeah, there's something I like about that. Just do it. If you're gonna kill yourself with cans with cigarettes, do it, right? Yeah. No, you you you've got it in one, mate. You've got it in one. It's uh, it's too cool for me. <laughs> the vaping. Grand final. What a cracking game, mate. Did you love it? Yeah, I did. I did. It was uh it was everything all of us want. You know, you, you, it, gee, it's an empty feeling when the grand final sucks, the last game of the year. But this one was it was an absolute beauty. And I, I think irrespective of who you were supporting or who you support, uh, the, you, you turned the telly off at the end of that and went, you know what? That was two good footy sides and a hell of a game of footy. Andy, you've watched a hell of a lot of league. Where does that performance from Nathan Cleary and where does Nathan Cleary stack up amongst all the great halfbacks you've seen? And you go back further than I do, further than Sterlow even. Yeah, um, <clears throat> amazing. Amazing. It uh, it was a 20-minute period. So, uh, you know, if we're going to break it down a little, it, it wasn't a full game performance, but it was the most dominant 20 minutes I've ever seen. Tell you what, the, oh, over here, there is a lot of, oh, Nathan Cleary is an immortal. Now, this is taking nothing away from Nathan, who's a terrific young footballer. It's not degrading in any way. But the people saying this have got no respect for history and the people that dug the well. Mark Graham, Peter Sterling, Ron Coote, Laurie Daly, Bob McCarthy, Stacey Jones, Brett Kenny. That's just off the top of their head. If you want to go back to the 60s and the Dragons' 11 premierships, the Harry Baths, the Popper Clays, the Billy Smiths. Jeez, you can throw in a Ken Irvine or a John Sattler. These are guys with an established legacy. Nathan may well go on to become an immortal, and there's every chance he will if he keeps going on the trajectory he's going. But on the back of a 20-minute or a one-game performance to be saying he's the best we've ever seen, he's the GOAT, he's an immortal... I think it's just absolutely outrageous. I think it's crazy. I think it puts... It, it's just clickbait. Mm, um, totally is. You know, re- really silly comments. There's, there is a great history in this wonderful game and, and it seems a lot of people are forgetting that. But in terms of what he did, can't do any more. Absolutely outstanding. It's a mate, look, it's a a, you, you used the word history there and I was really frustrated and actually I was a bit upset about it and I kind of pulled that back and just thought, okay, he's been asked this question at a press conference and he doesn't really know, but he should be bright enough to say, I don't know, or rather than that, don't comment about something that you don't care about, have no feelings for. It was Adi Savia at the announcement of the All Blacks to play Uruguay, and somebody asked yep. him why the All Blacks did the Kamati Haka in the last Test match against Italy, as opposed to Kapa or Pango. And he said, yep. "Oh, he goes, oh, Nug, this is a Aaron, um, Aaron Smith. He goes, oh, Nuggy, um, um, he said something that um, the Māori Battalion they fought in. Um, where was it? Where was it again? Oh, you know. And I just thought, you know, a for a start, Ardi. It wasn't just the Māori Battalion that fought in Italy. A hell of a lot of New Zealanders died in Italy. Yep. Okay, yep. and they were they were soldiers who didn't care about what the colour of your skin were. They were there and they were all dying next to each other. The other thing, mate, is if you don't know, don't pretend you care about it. And this is what I yep. hate about this generation. No respect. And I hate to, hate's too strong a word. I despise. No respect for history. Then shut up because you don't actually mate, understand. And the yeah. thing about sport, and this is what I love about the Americans as well, mate, I like to hear people talking about sport who can put some historical perspective and context alongside it. That's yeah. why I can't indulge in those silly debates. Nathan was brilliant in the last 20 minutes. Not just brilliant. That was game-winning, game-changing. And he cut the yep. life out of Brisbane. But then to all of a sudden elevate him into those names that you have mentioned who did it year after year like Nathan is doing at the moment, Nathan would be embarrassed at that. His father would be embarrassed at that. You are, yes. you and me are embarrassed at that. 
Mate, too true. Uh, going back to Artie, now I've done a lot of media training over the years, not so much in, re- in recent years, but, but you know, a decade, 15 years ago, done a lot of media training. And, and the, the, the first tip was be yourself. Don't try and be Peter Sterling or don't try and be an analyst. Be yourself because you'll get caught out. Tip number two, if ever you get caught out of with something, and this is exactly what you're talking about, don't try and know everything. Shrug it off with a laugh and say, those decisions are above my pay grade. Yeah. And have a laugh. Yeah. Yeah. And move on. Um, yeah. Uh, the history, not only of the game, but of our, our codes and our wonderful countries, um, yeah, probably it's not as important as as maybe what it once was, Marty. Well, you know, Andy, I mean, this is what this is how contrived all this rubbish is at the moment, right? I mean, in between matches, you know, the All Blacks went to a World War One grave site and performed a hucker and laid a jersey down there. They did it for their social media posts, okay? And yeah. so, and you know, at the time, I felt really icky about it, thinking that. Do any of you even understand? Are you giggling on the bus? Do you care about it? No, it's all just rubbish, mate. Just stop doing it. You're a bunch of professional rugby players. Stick to your goddamn lane and keep it there. We don't need to know the rest of it, that you're rescuing a starving puppy off the streets of Paris. It's just all rubbish, isn't it? Hey, Marty, can I ask a question? This has been, uh, this has been on my mind for, for a couple of weeks now. Uh, I'd love a perspective of a, a New Zealander. I am seeing the hucker performed at every debut game, at every player's retirement game, at every second presentation night where a, uh, a Maori will win an award. Is there, um, from, from your seat, uh, are we overusing or are people overusing the hucker for reasons that, it shouldn't be perhaps utilised? Look, I, I can't even... I, I don't know because, look, I, you know, and this is where I'll put my hand up and say, you know, I can't pretend yep. to have all the knowledge about this. Uh, when it happens, the people that do it are doing it because they feel at the time that this is what they need to do, want to do, and it's very appropriate. And so if that's mm-hmm. the case, look, I was at the graduation of my son uh, a few weeks back and there were several haka performed. There were several hymns sung, um, and 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 there were uh, Tongan and Samoan uh, kids there getting their degrees, and their families would step up okay. and do things. And look, and if that, to me, if that's if that's appropriate to you in the way that you behave, the yep. way that you celebrate, yep. all of that kind of stuff, that's absolutely fine. Um, what yep. I, you know, wh- wh- what to me is is where it gets inappropriate. And 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 I've you know stood in hot water here about this, and I've been you know received a lot of. Sh- shite on social media about it is to me the all blacks hucker is now a commercial gimmick is what it is whatever it used to be yeah it's now yeah. part of showtime and to me it's like it's almost like the rug i feel like the rugby unit have sold it as part of the entertainment spectacle you'll get the all blacks yep. playing plus you'll also get there now i've been shouted down by that saying you don't understand you don't maybe i don't understand but that's just me looking yep. at it thinking that what used to be spontaneous and natural is now to yep. me part of your ticket price. And I, and I don't think that was ever the intention. But look, you know, I will be shouted down because I've just said that. But that's what I genuinely believe. You know, I don't believe it should be choreographed for TV. I think that what the players should now do is do what the Sevens teams used to do. If they feel like doing it after a game, do it after a game to celebrate with their fans and everything else. But these days, when it starts, mate, you know, and I know a lot of people feel like this, and it's the you know, it, it's not the wrong thing to say. It's just the way I feel. But a lot of people, I think, look at it now and go, they sigh and go, "Oh, just get on with it." You know, just get on with it, okay? And so, because mate, what I do know is that uh, as a young man growing up in Australia, I, I loved seeing the haka, and it it was different, and and it was engaging, and it was ferocious. And I say this in no disrespect whatsoever, but I have seen it more in the last year than I probably did the first 30 years of my life. Look, I think these conversations are important. They're not disrespectful. I just think it's, a, it's, no, a, it's and an exchange. No, yeah. and neither do I. It's just an exchange of views. And and look, and we're allowed to have the opinions that we have. That, I mean, and that's all it is. You know, I'm there to watch a game of sport. And, you know, to me, it's like, you know, it's almost become like, 
you know, the, the waffly opening ceremony that you get at these things where you get the ribbon dances and the lights go up and the yep. guys choreographed. Yep. And then just sh- get on with it. I'm here to watch this game of sport. You know, having said that, you know, when Fiji do theirs and, and Tonga do theirs and and all of that, I mean I'm 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 spellbound by it. And I'm sure, you know, when you're in the yeah. stadium when you're in the stadium and watching it and that it's like, wow, because I've never seen this before. So that probably contradicts everything that I've just said. Andy, how how does the NRL get better? How does next season get better than this? I think oh wow, I, I don't know. It's been a it's been a terrific season. I maintain the gulf between the good sides and the not so good sides is increasing gradually every year. I think there's probably seven sides already that I would almost happily cancel out of finals football for next year. That said, that said, the salary cap is a delicate beast and it's difficult to to monitor properly. I don't believe it is being monitored properly. I think uh, in particular one team towns or one town teams, whichever way you want to look at it, I, I think they obviously have the benefit because of third-party arrangements that can pay the players that aren't included in the salary cap. Um, I'm, I'm leaning towards a draft. I really am, and it, it It was started in the early 90s. It was taken to court. It was seen as a restraint of trade. But I think we need the balance a little bit better between our best and our worst in fear of moving into a model a bit like the English Premier League where you know one of four sides is going to win it every year and the rest of them, they're just there to make up the numbers. So I'd like to see a concentration on... um, spreading talent a little more evenly. Because Penrith and Brisbane, on paper, are so far ahead of the pack, you know, they're lonely. And what we need is we need, every now and again, to have West Tigers wriggle through like they did in 2005. Mate, we're off to Paris on Saturday night, so we won't be in touch for a few weeks. We'll be Rugby World Cup in ourselves to to the nth degree. We'll be back in touch in a month, mate. what What tournament's that? You know, you love it. It's just that you lot are so miserable. You've already come home. Yeah, we, we have, mate. We, we as, as a country, as a supporter base, we've checked out. <laughs> Go the All Blacks. Go on, son. Thank you so much for that, Andy Raymond. <laughs>